I'm not gonna lie. I've been uh, I've been putting this one off. Definitely, it definitely doesn't feel good coming back, sitting in front of the camera. Ah oh, man, just knowing like that one really just got away from us, and it's so it's so unfortunate because it was just so uncharacteristic of this team the past few weeks. The turnovers, I mean, Quinn. Quinn has flirted with turnovers. You know, he's flirted with some interceptions in previous games. You know, made late reads, throwing late routes. But the interception to start the game, it just, it boggles me. He looked at the coverage. He watched the cornerback sit on the slant. He clutched. And then he threw it anyway. And that one just, <sighs> to start the game off, I mean, now, he, to be fair, he had the turnover in the red zone, which was not just his fault. Now, he's got to put a better pass on JT Sanders, you know, throw that pass and hit him in the chest. But JT Sanders can't bobble that, that ball like that. He had both hands on it. It's not like it was a hard, difficult catch to make. He's just got to secure the catch. You see in the replay when you when you watch it. it. Gave him enough time to come and punch the ball into the air. Punched the ball into the air and got the perfect ricochet. And they intercept that pass. Now, that, that interception is bad for two reasons. A few reasons, I should say. It's bad for a few reasons. It's bad because it was thrown in the red zone. It's bad because that is essentially, um, it takes seven points away from us. That's seven points off the board immediately. It was the second turnover. It's not like it was a it was a critical turnover. It was. And just say what it was. It was a critical turnover. And even though it led to a punt block for a touchdown, it still was it still was a, a pivotal point in the game. Because even just that happening gives Oklahoma's defense so much momentum. So there's there's the turnovers. You got the two interceptions immediately to start the game. Quinn also fumbles once at the 50 yard line. I believe that was in the third quarter, right? Three turnovers we had in that game, bad turnovers. And we only lost the game by four points. And we should have, we were in position to win the game with a minute and 17 seconds left. Um, I think the biggest disappointment for me was not Quinn Ewers. While it started off bad, two for six with two picks, that's bad to start. But he proceeded to finish the game 31 of 37 for 350 yards and a touchdown. He completed 84% of his passes. He was sharp. He made stupid mistakes and critical errors at critical points in the game. And we can't have those. And I think this kind of goes back to what I said last week. I thought we were going to win the game because we were going to be mentally more focused. We were going to be more sharp than OU. And we weren't. We were not mentally more focused. We were not physically as prepared to come and play. Oklahoma was playing fast and physical. And they were smothering us. Defensively, they were smothering us. Offensively, I mean, goodness gracious. The speed of that offense was even faster than I anticipated. I can only imagine how it was for those players on the field. They were going at lightning speed. And I thought, I honestly believed that was going to be to their detriment. Because I thought, you're going to go hyper speed and this D line is going to get to you. And you're going to go three and out in 15 to 30 seconds. The D line didn't show up. I mean, where were they? The D-line was nowhere to be found. They sat on the bus. They were still sitting on the bus while the game was being played. I don't know what happened to him out there. Byron Murphy went missing. Baron Sorrell missing. Ethan Burke, where, what did you do? Though? I don't even know if Ethan Burke had a tackle in the game. And he was in damn near the whole game. It was very frustrating. It was, a, it was a frustrating performance defensively, in my opinion. And I felt like our secondary was confused. Jalen Ford, 
was looked slow. He looked really slow. That was the thing for me. Jalen Ford looked so slow at linebacker. He looked a way that we have not seen him look at all this season. He he was questioning everything. He didn't know whether he was supposed to whether he should drop back or whether he should contain the quarterback, which was another added element that we didn't expect. And I think I even said this. I said don't expect Dylan Gabriel to run. Because Oklahoma knows what's at stake if they lose him. And talk about a tendency breaker. The ultimate tendency breaker was allowing Dylan Gabriel to use his feet and make plays. And not just use his feet to scramble out of the pocket and make busted plays. Design quarterback runs. There was the the first touchdown was a quarterback draw. It was designed. And you can see he lets he lets the tackle, I believe the tackle looped around and got a field on the on the linebacker he let that develop and turn into a nice touchdown the huge 50 60 yard run that he had however long it was that was a designed quarterback draw and we had no answer for it and really at the end of the day that's that's ultimately what what played us all game long it was dylan gabriel and his ability to use his feet because then you had our defense on their heels. They didn't know what to expect. And it's not like the running game was really a factor outside of Dylan Gabriel. They only rushed for, I think, what, three yards a carry? If you take Dylan Gabriel out of the mix? With him in there, though, he killed us. 115 or 114 yards rushing. 285 in the air. Hey, he played like a superstar. And this is you, you got to give credit to Oklahoma. This is no knock to Oklahoma. They came out and they played better than anybody, I think, thought they were going to. Even their own fan base. I, I don't think their fan base, the, the ones that are living in reality, the ones that are actual football watchers and not the passerbys, I don't even think their fan base expected them to, to put up this good of a performance. And I, the whole talk had been about how Oklahoma had not played anybody. And I even thought the same thing. The, the couple games that I thought they played sufficient opponents, they really struggled against. And I thought playing against a, te- a team like Texas, a defense like Texas, who in my opinion, previous to the OU game, were the most aggressive defense on the, on the field in all of their games. They were the more dominant at the line of scrimmage. None of that was true against OU. Their O-line controlled the line of scrimmage. Dylan Gabriel sat back there and built campfires and sang Kumbaya a couple times. And then he let the passes go. I, it was, I think that was like the, that was the ultimate factor because our, our coverage downfield was not terrible. Though I will say the long throws that Dylan Gabriel was making were blowing my mind. And I'm not talking about throws downfield. I'm talking about throws to the sideline where he's throwing 25 yards out to the out to the sideline where are our cornerbacks there's no way you can allow dylan gabriel to sit back and just throw a 25 30 yard out and our cornerback is nowhere to be found and it's not like he's running a a 10 15 yards down the field they're five yards eight yards down the field but it's taking four seconds for the ball to get there where are our cornerbacks we had no plays being made in the secondary. Jaron Thompson dropping a critical, critical interception when Gabriel, when Dylan Gabriel did what? Like I said he would. When he gave us an opportunity to make a play, Jaron Thompson let, hit, let the ball hit him in the face mask and dropped it. I mean, those things cannot happen. Those are the, those are the errors that OU did not let slip away. That's why they had three. They were three and zero in the turnover margin, because they did not let the opportunities that presented themselves for the defense to make plays. They didn't let them slip away, and our defense did. And we missed tackles all day long, and we looked like we were getting physically outmatched. Oklahoma just looked like they wanted it more. They were embarrassed last year, and they came to prove a point. And it looked like we thought we, not that we, I don't think that we took them for granted, but I don't think that we expected them to come out and punch us in the mouth the way they did. Because they really took it to us the whole game. And um, it's tough, man. But the one thing I will say, 
coming out of this game. If there's anything, if there's any positive you can take from the game, right? It's the fact that we played probably the absolute worst that we could play. Not only considering the turnovers, but the penalties, the pre-snap penalties, the stupid mistakes, running into the kicker, giving Oklahoma opportunities to extend drives. We didn't play our best game and still, with a minute and 17 seconds left, had the chance to get out of there with a win. And we just couldn't pull it out. And that's credit to OU, to their players, to the staff, sticking to the game plan and playing for 60 minutes. Because we played for about 58 minutes and 43 seconds. And had we just played for 60 minutes, we would be looking at us sitting at 6-0 right now. Having overcome all of those mistakes. Jonathan Brooks having another 100-yard day. Jordan Whittington and Xavier Worthy both having over 100-yard performances. All of those things could have stood out if we had just played 60 minutes. And I think that's the most disappointing thing. There's some game plan issues, some game, some play calling things that we could point out that, you know, I think Sark put us not in the best positions to um, extend drives, especially critically and late in the game when we needed it. But overall, it was just, it was a hard fought game and we made too many mistakes. We made mistakes that they didn't make and they capitalized on ours. And at the end of the day, that's just what it is. It's a, it's a rivalry game for a reason. You're going to get each team's best shot. And unfortunately, Oklahoma's was just better. They were able to hang on. Dylan Gabriel played the game of his, of his life, literally. I mean, he put the team on his back. That team was not going anywhere without Dylan Gabriel. And he made really critical plays in the most critical and most opportune times. So you gotta give your hats off to them. I think we'll see them again in the Big 12 Championship. In my opinion, just this game alone showed that I think these are these are easily the two best teams in the Big 12 Conference. And I think Oklahoma's a little bit better than we expected them to be. Their defense was a little bit more physical than I expected them to be for sure. But it's not like we had a difficult time moving the ball. 530 yards of total offense, 300 yards passing, 150 yards on the ground. That's not like we didn't struggle to move the ball. We didn't put the ball in the end zone. One for th one of three, I think, in the red zone, while Oklahoma was six to six in the red zone. Those are critical things that cannot happen. We can't go first and goal on the one yard line, four plays in a row, not gain one single yard. We'll get into those things later on in the week. But just from an overall standpoint, it's very disappointing, yes. I think still we are the better team. I think even on Saturday, we were the better team. We just made more mistakes. We just made more mistakes. Things that we've gotta, we've gotta clean up. And now the pressure's on us. We have to win out. You gotta win out if you wanna make it to the Big 12 championship game. And at the end of the day, that's the goal. Getting there will determine whether we make it to the playoff or not. And I have a feeling that getting there is going to mean a rematch with the Sooners. I wouldn't be surprised. So hats off to them. They go to 6-0 on the year. We go to 5-1. I think if the new right rankings came out, they jumped up to number 5 in the rankings. We fell to number 9, which I'm not surprised. I'm actually glad we stayed in the top 10, especially knowing, uh, considering what USC has looked like. They look absolutely atrocious defensively they don't look like a top five team in my opinion so it made sense to fall behind Oregon and to fall behind Washington these undefeated teams and Oklahoma doing what they did makes sense why they moved up as much as they did so um, yeah I think this is still we have a great team overall I think there's a lot of things that we can still clean up obviously there's a lot of coaching still to be done we still have growing and perfecting to do but six weeks later six to seven weeks later I should say, down the line, we got the Big 12 championship, and that's that's goal number one is getting there. It's not like the season is lost, right? It's one loss, and as long as we went out from here, we still have we still have our future in our in our hands. But we got to take care of business every week from here on out. So it is what it is. Hats off to OU. You take the golden hat this year. Um, it was a hell of a game. I'll say that. For whatever you want to say, it was a hell of a game. I was on the edge of my seat 
every single second of that game. I could not take my eyes away. I'm sure many of the viewers, much of the country watching felt the same. It was, in my opinion so far, it was the game of the year. It was an incredible game. It was an electric atmosphere as I expected it to be. And Oklahoma did what they needed to do to come out on top. So hats off to them. We have the rest of the season to take care of. And uh, yeah, it's still okay. I think we're going to be fine. It's one loss that's going to punch us in the mouth. But hopefully this is a wake-up call for some of these guys to come out and prepare and dominate every single week from here on out. Not just be good. Not just be really good. To be great. Come out and dominate every single day. I hope, I hope that is what kind of gets driven home from this loss. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of them. And we'll see how they respond from here. But yeah, that's all I got for you, man. If you haven't already, if you made it this far, please do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you enjoyed the content, if you enjoyed the conversation. Turn on those notification bells so you never miss an episode, never miss anything that we have coming out to you. Because remember, no matter where you look, there's no better place than Mo Better Sports for your latest football takes. I'm Mr. Mo Better, and I'm out. Peace.